So now we're going to discuss prokaryotes and how they divide by binary fission. So prokaryotes divide when the environment is favorable. An example would be there's enough, um, we have enough nutrients available. So they sense the temperature is correct. So anytime the environment is, is favorable, the bacteria are going to initiate the division process. So when the signal is received, replication of DNA happens, and as you already know, um, chromosome is that circular DNA chromosome with one origin of replication, and um, the replication of DNA takes place in, in both directions, so it's bidirectional, and you can see here how you form two individual DNA molecules, and um, these are your circular chromosomes. And eventually, at the termination point, this is where that protein is going to be cleaved and you're going to separate the two um, DNA molecules and one of them will go to one cell and the other one is going to go to the other one. So the segregation of DNA or separation of DNA is, um, is carried out by certain proteins and there are motor proteins and there are actin-like actin -like proteins that will provide filaments so that way the DNA and um, other structures, cellular structures, can actually be moved to separate cells. So the end result of binary fission is genetically identical cells. In this case, these are your bacterial cells. So eukaryotic um, cell division is going to be different um, if you compare that with binary fission because eukaryotic cells have many chromosomes and those chromosomes need to be separated and separated with great accuracy. So eukaryotic cells divide by mitosis and mitosis is followed by cytokinesis which is the division of the cytoplasm. And, um, we can group these events that happen within the eukaryotic cells into two major parts. So we have interphase and mitotic phase. So uh, interphase is where the cell hangs out 90% of the time. So and there's going to be subphases in the interphase. So G1, this is where the growth is happening. Uh, S phase where DNA is replicated and G2 phase, the second gap or second growth, this is the basic preparation for cell division. So the actual mitotic phase or the M phase is where chromosomes are going to be separated. This is where the nuclei divide and then um, the entire cell is separated into two daughter cells by the process of cytokinesis. So what does the cell look like during interphase? If we focus on the DNA content, and that's exactly what we need to do, we're going to see that DNA is organized in the form of chromatin. Right before cell division, chromatin is going to condense into these chromosomes. And at this point, we're going to see that these chromosomes are replicated because they're made up of two sister chromatids that are attached at the central mirror. It's much easier to separate sister chromatids than it would be to separate chromatin. So we would probably lose a lot of genetic information on that mechanism would not be exactly accurate. We're going to take a look at mitosis, which is the division of the nucleus in greater detail and examine how these chromosomes separate. So as we mentioned before, we talked about the interphase. We said that there are three phases, G1, S, and G2. So chromosomes are not visible here. We have nucleolus. We have clear nuclear envelope. But when the cell receives the signal to proceed with mitosis, chromatin is going to begin condensing into chromosomes. So now you can see chromosomes made up of two sister chromatids. And the pair of centrioles have also been replicated and they're going to start to migrate to the opposite poles of the cell. And these regions, the central some regions, this is where centrioles are located, are going to start developing spindle fibers, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. And um, in prometaphase, notice now spindle fibers and these specific kinetochore microtubules are going to be moving chromosomes back and forth and, tr and trying to arrange them across the equatorial plate of the cell. So in other words, across that center of the cell. Line them up. And that's exactly what happens in metaphase. Notice how all the chromosomes are perfectly lined up at the equatorial plate. And at this point, G1 
genital core microtubules are going to begin to break down. In other words, they're going to shorten, and therefore those cystochromatids are going to be pulled apart. So as soon as they get separated, we no longer call them cystochromatids. We just refer to them as individual unreplicated chromosomes. So you can see how these fibers are shortening and these chromosomes are now being pulled apart. And this is uh, anaphase. So in telophase, these chromosomes are going to uncondense, un uncoil and relax and return into what we call chromatin stage. And the nuclear envelope is going to reappear. And notice how cytoplasm is starting to divide or pinch the cell and divide the cell in half. Um, so if this is an animal cell, you would observe um, cleavage furrow forming. And if this is a plant cell, you would see a cell plate. Um, so, and then the end result is two identical daughter cells. They are genetically identical. Yes, errors can happen, but at this point we assume that this was completely done and no errors were made. So if you take a look at this slide and you pause, you can revisit what happens in each phase, what type of events, and uh, spend some time here. But next, I am going to talk about the spindle fibers. So spindle fibers are basically microtubules, and microtubules are formed from tubulin dimers, if you recall, alpha and beta, so they form these hollow structures. So there are three different types. We have astral microtubules, we have kinetochore microtubules, and interpolar microtubules. So astral microtubules are going to help keep the poles apart, and they're going to interact with proteins within cell membrane. Notice how we have a pair of centrioles in the centrosome region, and these astral microtubules are going to be interacting with proteins within the cell membrane. So they are on both ends of the dividing cell. Then kinetochore microtubules, these are connected to kinetochores. These are proteins that are sitting on the centromere of chromosomes. So these are your chromosomes that you're trying to separate. The interpolar microtubules are going to be overlapping. So these are the ones, and they are going to elongate the cell because, after all, you're trying to separate the DNA content apart so that you can eventually pinch the cell in half and uh, complete the division process. And then notice there are some motor proteins that are involved, and they are going to be helping with the separation, the whole separation process. So how do we move chromosomes to the opposite poles? So let's examine this replicated chromosome again. So they are identical, and they're identical because remember in the S phase we had um, DNA synthesis. So we had one DNA molecule, we made a copy of it, now we have two, and when these strands of DNA condense, now you're looking at these beautiful replicated chromosomes. So this region is called centromere, and centromere will contain kinetochore, it's a protein that will allow kinetochore microtubules to bind. So, so again, this is your chromosome, and then notice this is the kinetochore, and then we have that fiber, that microtubule fiber. And then there are these, there are these proteins that are going to be utilizing ATP, and they're going to pull the chromosomes apart. And when they walk down mm -hmm. this microtubule, Notice tubulin units are falling apart. So this microtubule is depolymerizing. So in other words, it's shortening. And that's how the entire um, pulling or drawing of the chromosomes toward the opposite poles is going to be taking place. So here's another picture of the entire process. And uh, you can see how Kinetochore microtubules are made up of these tubulin dimers, and then how they depolymerize, how they fall apart. So this is that shortening, and this is the kinetochore that's attached to the centromere. Now also pay attention to the how the microtubules are attached to kinetochores, what would be considered unstable attachment and what would be considered stable attachment. So imagine if the microtubules attached like this, 
um, on the chromosome, both of these both of these sister chromatids would be pulled into one cell. So, it, and the other cell would be actually missing a chromosome. So that would definitely not be a good thing. Mitosis uh, is typically followed by cytokinesis. Now, keep in mind that it doesn't have to happen. Sometimes you'll have multinucleated cells where you have multiple nuclei. Uh, but typically, after mitosis is complete, cytokinesis will take place. And in animal cells, notice we have the cleavage furrow that forms, and there's this contractile ring of microfilaments that's sort of going to pinch the cells in half. And then um, uh, if you look at um, in plant cells, there will be a formation of cell plate in between the nuclei. So the material to form cell plate comes from from these vesicles. So these vesicles are being deposited there, and these vesicles are coming from Golgi apparatus. So that means they have lots of protein, and they also have sugars. So, and then remember, in order to build the cell wall and expand that cell wall when the cell is growing, photosynthesis is going to have to take place so that sugars can be, so that sugars can form the um, cellulose, and you can lay down that cellulose to make the cell wall in plants. And this picture shows um, different stages of the cell cycle. So you're looking at an onion root tip. So notice not every single cell is dividing at the same time. Most of them will be hanging out in the interface. Um, but like this one, uh, let's see which one. Let's look at this one. This one shows that chromosomes are, uh, or chromatin is starting to condense. And in this case, here, they are all lined up across the center of the cell. And then here you can see separation. So this one is almost, um, almost done. So this would be anaphase. And then this cell right here, if you notice, would show telophase. Because you can see these cells are smaller. And now nuclear envelope is starting to reappear. And then chromosomes are starting to uncondense again. So they would be entering G1 phase soon. OK, I will continue cell cycle control system in the next video.